We're almost there now, step nine. How to answer a P2 exam question in 10 easy steps. Step nine is going to be looking at uh, my recommended answer for part D. So we're looking at uh, June 2010, the question Kate, and I'm going to pick up my copy, which is on my left-hand side, and start to analyse it out loud with you. In 2010, financial statements, that's this year, Kate disclosed the existence of a voluntary fund established in order to uh, provide post-retirement benefit plan to employees. A voluntary pension. Who's ever heard of a voluntary pension? What nonsense. But that's what they're saying, it's a voluntary pension. Kate considers its contributions to the plan to be voluntary. It considers them to be voluntary. It doesn't mean that they actually are voluntary and has not recorded any related liability in its consolidated financial statements, presumably because it's creative accounting. Kate has a history of paying benefits to its former employees. Now, because Kate has a history of paying benefits, you could argue that they have a constructive obligation, which works quite nicely. And many students, when they answered this, they did talk about a constructive obligation. I'm going to nail it down even harder than that with something that comes up later in the scenario. Kate has a history of paying benefits to its former employees, so at very least has a constructive obligation. Even increasing them to keep pace with the main annual contributions to the plan are determined as a function of the fair value of the assets, that's the liabilities from the past services. Well, that's just referring to the way that they manage it, you know, trying to keep the asset keeping pace with the liability. But the really key uh, element of this uh, mini scenario is lower down in the last paragraph. Um, Kate argues it should not have to recognise the plan because according to the underlying contract, the underlying contract. The underlying contract. There is a contract. If there's a contract, then there is a contractual obligation. If there's a contractual obligation, the scheme is not voluntary. This is not a voluntary pension. It's a contractual pension. It's just a usual pension. According to the underlying contract, it can terminate its contribution plan if and when it wish wishes. The termination clause in the contract establishes must be immediately purchased a lifetime annuities from the insurance company for all the retired employees who are already receiving benefits when the termination of the contribution is communicated. In other words, there is a contract and if we choose to um, opt out of the contract, we can, but we have to make up, we have, you know, we have, to, we have to pay off the employees in order to do so. Which is true with all contracts, you know. Any contract that you have with anyone, you can, break, you can breach it, but you have to you know, pay the person to get out of the deal. It's just a normal contract. It's a contractual obligation. It's not voluntary. There's no voluntary element of it. Um, indeed, if we did decide not to pay, we'd have to pay penalties to get out of the scheme, as it says at the bottom. Great. Okay, let's have a look at my answer, see what you make of it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump straight in with a bit of scenario analysis, to be honest with you. The question is, you know, the question talks about voluntary. Is the scheme voluntary? So let's get that out the way, first of all. The pension is described as voluntary, and that is why Kate is claiming to have no liability. However, I think the mention of an underlying contract gives away that the pension is not voluntary, and so pensions accounting is required. But which form of pensions accounting? Pensions. There are two types of uh, pension, and their meanings are literal. There's a defined contribution plan and a defined benefit plan. But which one is it? Final salary. Paragraph 3 makes it clear. Now let's read paragraph 3 again. Paragraph 3. The post-retirement benefit is calculated based on a percentage of the final salaries. Just read it again. The post-retirement benefit is calculated based on a percentage. So which thing is being defined? Is it the benefit that's being defined in paragraph 3? Or is it the contributions that are being defined in paragraph 3? Paragraph 3 says the benefits are defined as a percentage. 
So if it's the benefits that are defined, it's a defined benefit pension scheme. Paragraph 3 makes it clear that it is the benefit that is defined, so this is a defined benefit plan, because the benefits are defined. But defined benefit pension accounting, as we know, is quite complicated. Position statement. This is the really complicated pension with a growing asset and separate growing liability and an actuary to manage the two. The IFRS requires detailed disclosure in the notes and a net liability on the face of the balance sheet. Performance statement. Into the income statement go uh, the service cost, the unwinding cost and the expected return. Into the other comprehensive income goes the actuarial gain. So I'm just concluding there with how um, defined benefit pensions accounting looks without giving too much detail because we've got to be careful because otherwise we're going to you know, run out of our 45 minutes for this question. Okay, that would be my recommended format, my recommended words for answering the final part of Kate Part D.